I'm Josh Gasser. And I'm Jordan Taylor. Welcome back to A Shot of Whiskey, Season 2, Episode 13. Let's get it. But before we jump in all the way, my man Josh, still proud to tell everybody listening along that we are still rocking with Underdog Fantasy, our newest port, our newest partner, excuse me, and on top of that, even better, they're still currently running a promo for all new users. They have been all season long, about three months in, and the easiest way for you to get in on this special is by downloading their app and using our code ASOW24, that is ASOW24, and go ahead and play along. So what are you waiting for? Stop messing around, get started, come play along with me and Josh for the rest of the season at Underdog Fantasy. Josh, what's happening, man? Big week over in Minneapolis for the boys. Almost got it done. Almost got it done. A heck of a run. I think we were uh, frantically texting after each game, <laughs> national championship. <laughs> after the, after I the believe. Game. Hop on the bandwagon, baby. <laughs> Hop on the bandwagon. I think it started after the uh, the the big offensive explosion uh, against Maryland which was a sight for sore eyes. Threes were going down. Um, I think that's the biggest story, right, is it seems to that the offensive rhythm is back. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fair start. I wouldn't even say the offensive rhythm. I would say the energy, the competitive spirit, the aggressiveness. I, I, I don't know. It, something – I almost didn't recognize this Badger team, and not only not only like this year's team, but comparing it to the last like twenty five years, like we were like pressing full court. Chucky was pulling up, picking up ninety four feet. We were overplaying the wings. We were making people uncomfortable. <laughs> we were aggressive offensively, taking early shots in the shot clock. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if you got that same feeling, but it's just that like it didn't feel like the Badgers in, in that sense sense of way, but we still only ended up with seven, five and 10 turnovers. I think in the final three games, which is why I think we played pretty well. Cause we were being aggressive, picking up, but, well, but still not turning the ball over. And quite honestly, I think uh, Chucky Hepburn was the one who led this whole train. I mean, his energy, his leadership, his spirit, I think uh, just fed to the rest of the group. Uh, but it was really fun to see. I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I think uh, you said 25 years. That's a, You know what that um, – it actually reminded me of one particular game, specific – the Illinois championship game reminded me of the UNC-Wisconsin game back in 2005, yeah. uh, the year after Devin left, when it was just back and forth and it was a high-scoring thing, high-scoring game. We ended up losing uh, by whatever, 5-8 to eventual national champions UNC. But you but, lost that game and you felt good. Like even gets yeah, a little bit. Like, I'm like I'm kind of proud of this, these guys. I'm not. Like, it was a fun like, game to watch. You, yeah. It was a fun game to watch. You went toe for toe. It was easily if it would a couple shots go the other way, and I think it was one of those things where maybe you point where the defense could have been a bit better. But I thought they played solid defense as well. Like Illinois' talent. Terrence Shannon is in the open court. Is he's legit. Yeah, like he's as as good as anybody I can remember in the open court in the Big Ten in a long time. Um, he could have gotten to the free throw line. I mean, he got like what was he fourteen or sixteen from the free throw line. He could get to the line anytime he wanted with his size, athleticism, and and what he did defensively too was pretty impressive. Yeah, no, but Chucky, Chucky definitely led the way. That was amazing to see. If you can add Tyler Wall, but I don't know what is going on with him in these last couple of games. He seems to have lost his rhythm, but rhythm. But to me, that should be again somewhat encouraging. Only reason I would say is not just because. It's he's got, you know, one game guaranteed left in his Badger career. So it's not it's nothing really like, oh, he's he's going to turn it on here. But Tyler is a talented player. He's skilled. He he has all these things to his game where if you add him into the mix of what was going on, then again, that's the six ranked team where at that five seed, that vaunted five twelve matchup. I like the I like the draw. I like the. I remember when I I texted you. When you were a, uh, what was it, your, whatever, your red shirt junior year, whatever it was. And I remember texting y'all, y'all got the the two seed, right? Yeah. Was it the two seed? And I remember I texted y'all, I said, y'all are going to the final four. I remember looking at the draw <laughs> and yeah. I said, you can't, right? Not yeah. even to be yeah. an I told you so guy. But I'm looking at this and even though I see Duke, eh. This is not. This is not a Coach K Duke. This is not three lottery picks. This is a good, a good, solid Duke team. They're a good team, but yeah. so are we. 
<laughs> eh, right. Eh. So I look at that. I, obviously, James Madison, I don't know a ton about them, admittedly. But then you look past that. What is and James get, Madison? I mean, people are like, oh, it's a tough draw. Some people, and it's like, we just lost like eight of 10 games and we get to play James Madison in round one. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, and that that's a typical I remember that's a typical Wisconsin everybody thinks Wisconsin's gonna lose that game just because yeah. it's Wisconsin. If it was any other power five school, they'd be like James Madison's gonna lose by 20. I remember in my junior year, your freshman year, we got Belmont in a 413, and everybody was picking Belmont. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, if man. Duke was if Duke was facing James Madison, I mean that's a four seed in space, four or five, same thing. Like it's I don't think it would be this this hype around it. Like, yeah, and and granted that that Belmont team had Ian Clark on it as well, so it's like you know it was uh, whatever. But look past that, you know, and obviously this is what you do in the tournament, especially as a fan. You look all the way into the future, all the way up to the national championship, because <laughs> what could go wrong, of course. But you look, <laughs> you look up to and Houston, obviously being the biggest challenge in that bracket. Houston is a team that likes to play aggressive. They have guards that can get downhill. They do have a four-man. I forget his name. I'm blanking on his name, who's actually probably a pro, really talented yep. four-man, but a freshman. He's young. Yep. That's the type of team that Wisconsin, I'm not scared of in the tournament. I'm like, all right, you can, we're really good at counteracting that aggressiveness, keeping guards kind of corral, contain, and going from there. And their guards, who are their two best players, I think are both six feet, 180 pounds, which, you know, obviously is a, is – Presents, presents challenges, but also not like physically Terrence Shannon, who scares you in that way. And Houston's known for their defense. I mean, that's what they are and Ken Palm and all this stuff. So when you're playing a defensive minded team, it's going to be a close game. Like no matter what happens, it's going to be a close game. So with six minutes left, four minutes left, it's going to be a one or two possession game. And all we got to do is make a couple shots. So that mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. The road is not that is not that fierce. That said, we can beat anybody. We can lose to anybody. Um, so oh guys, uh, but I, I'm really – uh, I'm really proud of the guys and happy with the way they played over the Big Ten tournament. I mean, um, you, you brought up Tyler Wall. Uh, I think he was hurt. I mean, he he was hurt. It felt yeah. like he had this little knee thing that was bothering him. That's been something we haven't been able to figure out this whole season is getting all of our guys, at least this past two months, getting all our guys like healthy, um, mm -hmm. playing well, out of foul trouble at the same time. Like, you know, Chucky finally got back healthy, uh, Kamari healthy, Max. It always feels like we got somebody who's dinged up, somebody who's missing a game. John Blackwell missed a couple of games. And then Tyler was in foul trouble. I mean, it, it feels like every game, either Tyler or Steve are getting in foul trouble and we're forced to bring in a, a Marcus Silver, a, a Carter Gilmore playing extended minutes. And those are some of the little things that I'm going to be looking for in the tournament. Like, these guys got to stay out of foul trouble. Steve and Tyler have got to stay out of foul trouble against James Madison because we have the size advantage. Those guys are going to be able to, to score on the block, to get rebounds and, and do that. And if we don't, if we take that size advantage away, then it becomes a more even game. I, I think, you know, hundred percent. And you mentioned Steve, I think Steve Crow got to be him and Chucky are the X factors. I think we've been, we've almost been racking our own brains trying to figure out who the X factor is like, who's going to be to me. It's like, we've been hard on eight. We've been obviously he praise on AJ because AJ is amazing. We've also been hard on AJ at times as well. I think at this point, they finally have an identity, which is what you talked about. They didn't have one where it's like AJ is who he is. He's kind of a, he's going to go get you a bucket. He's going to shoot. He's going to give you volume. He's going to give you athleticism. But Chucky and Steve <laughs> at the, at the one in the five being aggressive offensively when they're good. Oh, this is a top. I, I'll go as far as say a top five team in the country. I agree. I think Chucky, Chucky's finally figured out who he is, both as a player but also a leader. I don't know if you followed. I've been, I've been like fucking loving what Chucky's doing, even in the press conferences lately and in the huddles. I don't know if you followed any of this stuff, but he had a great quote after the Illinois loss when Coach Moore was there on the court. He had a great quote that I loved that I feel like the guys kind of rallied around a little bit. Uh, he was talking in the huddles. I heard. Um, I'm sure you saw on Selection Sunday when he had that straight face and 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 kind of come from blood quote. Like Chucky is finally like locked in, uh, leading, um, showing that next level of like competitive. Like I want this shit, and I'm going to do whatever I can. And I feel like some of that was missing. Like our guys were just like playing too much instead of like getting down in the dirt and competing at that next level. So I love what Chucky's doing, and I think everybody else is coming coming with them and Steve being more aggressive too. So we've been kind of talking about these two guys being more aggressive and figuring it out for a while. 
And I think we saw how good they can be when those two guys are doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're amazing. And to be fair, like you said, that's been missing. When, like, that's that's always kind of the heart of Wisconsin, too. The point guard, just by default, almost, yeah. has always been, like, the leader. Uh, I can go back as far, what, like, obviously, Devin, even when Sharif was there, Sharif and Cam Taylor and, like, I'll say your guys' year. Tra- Trayvon was definitely a yeah, leader. You like, and Trayvon. Like a lead guard. It doesn't even have to be a but it's some lead guard who's just going to be a, a presence or a voice. A dog. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And obviously Trayvon Hughes. So, yeah, I would say – I'm trying to think. Chuck Chucky has been that intermittently. Intermittently. School word for y'all. Uh, so <laughs> he's been that intermittently. And now to your point, yeah, I think it's great for him to finally – I think he's done it. I think he's done a good job at it. So I don't want to rip on him, but I think, like you said, it's just really, yeah, he's, like he's showing it. He's like showing it visibly more instead of like being being like I'm this cool cat because he is that cool, calm cat who can do. It, but he can also show him that he can get down and dirty too, which is what this team needed. He turned into that KG doll. <laughs> yeah, Get your ass. Don't. Well, Chucky, I mean, Chucky's <laughs> basketball IQ is is so high. He's got a great pulse on the game, and I think he saw you know, what this team needed. I honestly think I don't, he was hurt that one game. He missed a game and in the big 10 tournament. And then he came back and he looked like he was healthier than ever. I think him almost being on the sideline for that game and getting to like, take a step back and watch the guys and watch the flow of the game and see it from a different space. I think he noticed like where his value is and what this team needed. And he almost came out the next two games. And it was just like a different player, a different like aggressiveness with his play and his mind. And I think, I don't know, is I don't even know why he didn't play. <laughs> he looks like healthier than ever the next game, you know? But yeah. uh, it's something, something like sparked him being on the bench for that game. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we were remiss not to, we haven't had him on this podcast yet. He's been, you know, he's big time. So we got to, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to flag him down. I think that's got to be the goal when, if and when they go to the second weekend of the tournament after they knock off James Madison, knock off Duke. Chucky's got to be, um, He's got to be uh, priority number one for a shot of whiskey podcast because I would love to get into his mind um, and hear his perspective on how things have changed throughout the year. And if they do go into that sweet 16 round, when they go into it, how they're going to get past the Houston, how they're going to how they're going to continue to propel themselves forward, you know? Yeah. I'm totally with you. Totally with you. It's funny you brought up AJ too. I don't know if you you know. I've been texting you some of the AJ stats. Uh, Big Ten tournament, seventy shot attempts, one assist. But that's yeah. AJ. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's like he he just he hey. brings a different dynamic to to our game, and he just the way he can score the ball is just is just so impressive. It feels like whenever we need a bucket, like we're not going on these eight minute droughts, four minute droughts, like you watch Virginia yesterday and some of the last year Wisconsin games. I mean, AJ doesn't allow that to happen. If, if yeah. we go, if we have two possessions without scoring, he can just put his head down and get to the basket and either yeah. get a shot at the rim, a little pull up, or get fouled. Yeah. So, I mean, his he's just impressive, and but and he's got so much room to grow as a player. Talk about one assist and seventy shot attempts. He's got that much to grow. <laughs> too, you know, nah, nah. Shoot till you get hot. When you get hot, keep <laughs> yeah. shooting, baby. <laughs> don't pass don't pass gas man let that thing fly aj that's not that's not a hater stat that's just more of like he is a bucket getter and chucky knows what he's got to do and he's got you know yeah, man, find our identity a, my man's jim my man aj is a shot taker he ain't got no to pass <laughs> <laughs> what is that you know, he, yeah, he, he actually that passed guy. himself off the backboard and almost punched it that would have been assist should have been an assist it's <laughs> <laughs> almost assist but yo I, let, let's talk about we had Mike DeCourcy on the show. Shout out Mike DeCourcy, the March, the March GOAT. Um, he talked about the Badgers being going no lower, no lower than a six seed uh, when he was on the show, regardless of outcome um, in the Big Ten tournament. Do you think that there sh- we should have been a five seed or higher with the outcome? And if we beat Illinois, would we have been a higher than high uh, higher than a five seed? I think once we beat Purdue, we were locked into that five. Quite honestly, I don't see a difference. You look at the matchups between the four, fives, and sixes. Like, what's the difference? I mean, like, Duquesne was an 11. James Madison's a 12. Somebody else is a 13. Like, what the hell does it matter? There are people are a bunch the same. Mike, of course, kind of talked about that, too. So, 
I think being a five is kind of where we belong based on our schedule, based on what we did, uh, beating Purdue. I think it's more about uh, just, again, feeling good about yourselves coming into the tournament. And I think right now we feel good about ourselves and we're playing well. So I think five is, is about where we should be. And um, I, I like the road. You talked about it. All right. All right. I, you know what? I, do you think we could have snuck to a three, though? No? That's too high. It's too high. I, but, I mean, again, the brackets were already kind of out by the time that true, championship true, game. True. Like it, I, I just feel like – and again, I don't think it would have a matter of Duke and I switch Duke and us switch spots. We'd be playing each other in the second round, playing whoever. You know, it, it true, doesn't really matter. So, I don't know. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right, before before we get into some of our bracket picks, um, I want to talk about like shout out Coach Guard, man. We got we got to show Coach Guard some love. The coaches, the coaching staff, some love. Tournament basketball is much different than regular season. There's an art to it. There's uh, that he seems to do well into pretty well in when he's in the tournament um that ato that they got for chucky to the ring around the rosy ato was fire i <laughs> did to get chucky you, an easy you, layup you know what that play was no tell me we didn't have that one no we didn't either it was the uh, same play they ran against xavier in the to go to the sweet 16 where bronson hit that three was it same exact play but they, he, he went around he wrapped around instead of shooting the three like bk did he Broke a man down. Really? Okay. That's a good, that's big, a good big, Yeah. They, they brought Edie, you know, they call it timeout right before that play. And Edie was initially under the rim uh, to start that possession. And then they call it timeout. And then Edie went on the ball, I think. Yeah. Edie went on the ball. So that I think Chucky probably noticed that. And then the, the lane was wide open. So it was a really smart decision and good call by Coach Guard. Yeah. Right. I'm not so, you know, sure. Past. <laughs> yeah. That, so that's a high percentage. But I remember just, I, I didn't remember it from Xavier. That's a good catch that Edie was. I was out in uh, I was out in Central London, so I was yeah. more focused on <laughs> Central <laughs> London at the pub, eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, so no, that that was really impressive. But um, just I think it also shows kind of the belief that these guys have in Coach Guard and, and vice versa. That Coach Guards have Coach Guard has in the players to be able to make a run like that and hopefully continue to run. Yeah, I'll also give Coach Guard and the staff credit. I kind of said earlier how we. Like we're picking up full court and pressuring. I mean, that's what I think that was a concerted effort by the coaching staff to tell Chucky, hey, pick up Braden Smith full court and try to get Purdue's offense extended further out. That's why they lost in the NCAA tournament last year to a 16 seed. You know, they, they pressured the guards, they got him out of their offense, got him stepping a little further away where Edie wasn't catching under the hoop. They weren't as comfortable. I think they did the same thing against Illinois, uh, pressuring Marcus Domask full court because Illinois doesn't have like a traditional point guard. Uh, so I feel like Chucky felt like he had an advantage of Marcus Domask was bringing it up or Terrence Shannon, like a bigger guy that he could kind of get into. And I felt like the staff made a concerted effort to to play to our personnel and to not play the traditional Wisconsin way always and kind of make adjustments. And I think Coach mm -hmm. Guard did that on both ends of the floor. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, I give him credit, Coach Guard credit, his adjustments. We we were never really an adjustments team. So shout <laughs> Uh, <laughs> shout, out, shout out shout out coach guard and his evolution and shout out you know whatever else needs to be shouted out but let's get to, <laughs> let, let's, let's go to man before we log off we gotta get some picks man so hey, i, I want to make one other point though about this team what? we gave i want to make one, one other point about this team why i feel good about this team in the tournament yeah I, you know we gave up three straight three straight games of the big 10 tournament where a guy got 30 on us and we still either won the game or basically won the game. And I feel like past Wisconsin teams, if someone dropped 30 on us, I don't think we were we had much of a chance. So I just feel like the fact that we gave up three straight games where a dry, guy dropped 30 on us, we beat really good teams or almost beat really good teams, I feel like that's a good sign going into the tournament that all we got to do is not let a guy, a guy go for 30. And even if they do, we have the offensive firepower to be able to kind of match that, which hasn't been the case always. Jacob Pullen had like 35, 38, and we we won. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I know. It's a good point. And we it's were a, a better player. team than most Wisconsin teams, that team. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I think, to your you point, know, you know that was a better Wisconsin team. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Young, the same thing my junior, senior year. Uh, he yeah, dropped 30 on us, and we still beat him. But most years, if a guy drops 30, 35 on us, we're probably in trouble. Yeah. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. All right, so here's what we're gonna do, man. I don't, I don't know what the boss is, what the higher ups have for us in terms of if we don't get to the Sweet 16, what our episode schedule will look like. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna to toss out. Obviously, we're gonna predict Wisconsin, right? Then I want you to give me 
How much you, you got a bracket in front of you, I'm assuming? I don't, but I can figure it out. Yeah, come here. on, Josh. Come yeah, prepared. I got you. Man. Come prepared, Josh. Come You're prepared. the one leading this thing. You think you come prepared? How do you think I, I come prepared? I'm prepared <laughs> all the time. I may be uh, uh, fashionably late at we times. We started this podcast about we 35 be, minutes late. I may so. be fashionably late at times, Josh. I'm living a busy life. I got baby on the way, Josh. I got baby on the way. I got things. Are like you making that public? You just I made it public. Yeah, yeah it's public, man. It's public. Yeah, it's public. It's public knowledge. Uh, now, baby. Papa Jordan. Love it. Baby, baby, baby. So, yeah, yeah. So, can't always be punctual, but I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, stop hating. Uh, <laughs> you go give me a Wisconsin James Madison prediction and score. Right now? First. Yep, right now. 78. No, 82, 70, Wisconsin. Ooh, okay. I'm going to go with 76, 65, 76, 65, Wisconsin. Um, 76, 67, Wisconsin. We go to the second round. All right. So that's, we're going to, obviously we're going to do that. I want you to tell me your sweet 16 teams and who's your biggest upset of the first round. Biggest upset of the first round. Let's start there. Yep. I like... I like Drake. That's not a huge upset. I like Drake in New Mexico. But in terms of a bigger one, um, I think I like UAB over San Diego State. I haven't watched either of those teams play at all, but I like it. That's your 12 5. <laughs> That's, That's 12 5. I like Mountain West always. They they fold. I, I agree. I was going to say, I got I got New Mexico out in the, I think, the Elite Eight. Yeah. Uh, just as like an underseated team to make it far, and then uh, you go, you go, you go ahead with yours before you get to. My biggest team. upset, I'm going NC State just because they're hot. That's easy. Yeah. I know that's the easy pick, but they're hot. I like the, I like the big fella. Um, yeah. So, Zach Randolph, gonna, I gonna, I gonna, but, Randolph, but but yeah. but you know what? I want. I'm just gonna throw out there. I'm gonna throw out Sanford beats Kansas. I have that as well. Ah, why didn't I say that? Damn. I'm gonna throw out Sanford beats Kansas. That probably is especially with McCullough being out now. McCullough's that, out. You even yep. thought that beforehand that yep. that uh, yep. they were in trouble. Yep. So I like that one. Um, okay. So now give me your Sweet 16 teams. You asked me to name 16 teams. You have a bracket in front of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it would all right. I got Auburn. I got UConn and Auburn. Just and then I got down. Illinois against yeah. Drake. Okay. Now what do you got? What do you got in that bracket on that side? I'm going Yukon. I'm going Yukon versus eh. Damn. Yeah, Yukon Auburn, I guess. I'm going Yukon Auburn and then I'm going Illinois and I'm going to Washington State. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to Iowa State. I'm going to keep it real clean over there. Sorry. All right. You know, I West- think I- I kind of what I do before the bracket comes out. I pick teams that I like. Auburn was my team that I really liked. I'm fucking pissed. I got stuck with UConn. I got Auburn beating UConn just because I, in my mind, I liked Auburn and I can't go against it. But anyway, UConn, UConn, if you can stop their action, like their action is so is good. It's fluid, yeah. But if you run into a good coach that like like Creighton when they did it, like if you can kind of disrupt their action, they don't really have a ton of playmakers. Exactly. So. I could see UConn going out early. Their leading scorer is a dude from Rutgers last year. Like, yeah. shot. I mean, he, he was he's a nice player, but I mean, they don't have a bunch of NBA guard. I mean, a couple, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm with a, you. I think I think Auburn can disrupt them a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of European action too. So like, UConn's good though. They're good, no, they but good. They're, they're not yeah. dominant. Yeah, they're very good. They're very good. All right, who you got in the West? North Carolina's bracket. North Carolina, Alabama. New Mexico, right. Arizona. North Carolina. I'm going Michigan. I'm going Sparty. It's March, baby. You know better than that. I'm going Sparty, Bama. I'm going to go with Clemson and Arizona. Are you going to be a Big Ten homer because we're on a Big Ten podcast, or are you going to play it real? Who am I being a homer to? A Big Ten. I'm just saying. Just asking. Who did I pick from the Big Ten? No, 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 no. Who else Michigan, I pick? Michigan I pick State. Illinois. Okay. You think yeah, Michigan, Michigan State is March? What do you mean? I, Michigan State. Usually, usually I, I'm with you. But, yep. I ain't gonna hold you. Michigan State in March. I might have picked them to be Wisconsin. They don't. They don't really lose <laughs> in March. <laughs> I'm just I'm keep the green bean, man. They tough. Yeah. All right. Go over to go over to the Midwest. Hurry up, man. 
Short on time. Uh, Houston, Wisconsin. That is not the Midwest, but in the East. In oh, the South, Midwest? Sorry, in the South. Go ahead with the South. Just finish. What? Okay. Houston, Wisconsin, Kentucky, yeah. Colorado. Ew. Colorado. Yeah. I ain't picking All Marquette. Right. Isn't, it, isn't that with Marquette? I'm going Houston, Wisconsin, <laughs> Marquette, and NC State. We rolling. Let's go. Oh. In the Midwest. <laughs> In the Midwest. TCU, Gonzaga, Creighton, and Tennessee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's going to be one one seed who doesn't make it to the Speed 16. That's usually you said the case. off air that you're trying to find clients to go hang out with during March Madness, and it seems you're already drunk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going I'm going Purdue, Gonzaga, uh, Purdue, Gonzaga. I'm going to go with uh, Coach P, Lamont Paris, South Carolina. Let's get it. I'm going with South Carolina and Tennessee. Uh, down there. All right. So that's uh, I got. hate that matchup with Coach P, man. Oh, hate what, it. Tennessee and, and South Carolina. No, no that's you, right. the first round. Yeah. Coach P, let's get it, man. All right. Now, give me your final four fast. Hurry up. Right Auburn, up. Arizona, either Wisconsin or Houston, and then Tennessee. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. Uh, I really don't like Purdue. I'm going to go with uh, Tennessee. Tennessee, Arizona, Wisconsin, and UConn. UConn goes back. Yeah. So we're yeah. pretty aligned other than the UConn Auburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we're not too Wisconsin far. Wisconsin right? that game. I, I got I don't want to sound too biased by just picking Wisconsin. Why? But. Why? You always yes, you can you Josh. We've talked about this. You can be you can be a little right, arrogant about it. your Wisconsin accomplishments. Wisconsin is making the Final Four, all right? <laughs> you can be biased and you can have some confidence and some arrogance about your accomplishments, man. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No one's going to hold it against you. <laughs> uh, all that's right. That's, that's fair, though, man. I got Wisconsin winning it all. I think we beat UConn in the final in the, in the the national championship. Go Bucky, man. You know how it is. But listen, man, that's all we got for you. I think that's uh, if. We'll see. We'll see because I don't know. Hopefully, I think we'll do a wrap-up show. We gotta talk to the boss, talk to the bosses, right? But um, this is all we got for you. Shot of whiskey, season two, episode thirteen. We agree greatly, greatly appreciate you guys tuning in this year. And you know, make sure you go check out Underdog Fantasy. Keep following along. Keep checking us out. Keep supporting Wisconsin Coach Guard. All the all the fellas as they go on this journey uh, through the NCAA tournament, man. So love. That's Josh Gosser. I'm Jordan Taylor. We'll catch y'all next time.